Hi everyone, Charlie here from Quoll, and today we've got a tech talk about backup software. Now guys, well now we're using our own equipment or having to make do with our equipment at home, we may not have a backup solution in place. Now today we've got four topics to, to touch on. We're going to be using Windows 10 built-in backup, we're going to use Backblaze, we're going to use a Cronus, and we're going to use the Apple Time Machine software. Now first of all, we're going to kickstart this with our Windows 10 built-in software. With the Windows 10 backup software, you will need an external hard drive or removable storage to back up your files onto. Now, you need to plug this in before we go through this process to make sure your drives are connected and powered on if they require external power. And then once we've done that, we can then start to open up the backup software on the Windows 10 machine. Now to do that, we can click on the start button in the bottom left or the Windows flag in the bottom left hand corner type in backup, select on backup settings, and then once we've done that, it will then open up, a win open up the backup window. We will then see the option to add a drive. Now this is gonna be where you add the drive you've plugged in. Now guys, bear in mind, just make a note of the drive letter. It will show up here and it will give you the name of the drive. So you, you guys see that, you can see my drive is the one terabyte D drive. I can select that. And now that's the automatically added to the backup using the file history. Now there's another option you can use, which is to do a full system image backup. Now you saw that you can click on the little button and open up the, what looks like the old school Windows 7 area to create a system image. Now once you've done that, there's a little button on the top left says create a system image. This will open up another area. And from here, this is the ability to create a full Windows image of your existing OS, um, if just in case you ever needed to restore. Now, guys, there's not there's a warning here that notifies you about the fact that my OS is encrypted and that my backup drive isn't encrypted. So just bear that bear that in mind, guys, that you may be encrypting or not encrypting your backup drive, but you are copying a OS that has been encrypted already. Um, so it's just a thing to keep in mind when you are doing your backups. Now that's going to take some time just to go through and do a whole backup of your operating system. Um, and in the meantime, you've obviously got things like the file history is also taking a backup of your useful files from your profile. And it's going to be backing those up to the same drive as well. So you can have multiple backups going on. The system image drive only happens on a schedule. The file history is happening every, I think it's by default, it's every hour. Um, but you can modify those settings to up to every 10 minutes um, and it keeps those files forever. But you can make those changes and you can obviously adjust those as you like. So that's the Windows backup side done. And now we move on to Backblaze, which is a great third party application used to back up your files from your computer into the cloud. Now, guys, I understand that backing your data up into the cloud, especially your personal data, might be a bit cautious and you might be a bit wary about that but don't worry guys because Backblaze has the ability to encrypt the, your data with your own private key which Backblaze will not have access to and it means that you are the only person who can have access to your data that you've uploaded to their cloud system. Now you can sign up for a trial which is what I've done today and then I'm going to go through the install process right now. So I've got the download on my desktop, we're just going to double click on that and fire that up. It will automatically know my account is already linked to it. So it's going to go through the install process now and it's going to install the files it requires for the application. It's a very lightweight, small application on your machine. Once it's done the install, it's then going to do a analysis of your drives and the data on your drives. So it can tell you what kind of data you're backing up to Backblaze. Now by default, it backs up the main local disk of your system. Um, but you can also tell it to back up external hard drives or other disks you may have on your computer. So it's going to start off by just backing up everything on the local disk, um, but we can obviously go into settings and we can change that. So if we pop into settings, it can then show us what options we have to adjust the backup schedules, files, and put encryption keys in. We can adjust the schedule. So as you can see here, this shows you a list of disks that it's going to back up. It's going to how many days it's going to alert me, it's going to tell me it's going to run to test. Um, and guys, it's always a good thing to remember that this is going to use your upload bandwidth on your connection at home. 
Um, so just bear that in mind when you've got your backups running that you don't want to be hogging all the internet. And again, you can change your backups here to continuously once per day or um, only when you want. Um, I know from my own personal experience, I try and do it once per day and set it to run as early in the morning as possible. Um, it's already got a list of predefined things that it excludes. So it's got a list of files that it's not going to try and back up. Um, and again, this is where we touched on about putting the encryption key in. And again, guys, please do that just so you know your data is safe and you that you know you have the only access to that data. Gives you a nice little report as to what files it's got to back up. And it also shows you another report here about the, the type of data you're backing up. So you can tell me it's got documents and what have you. And then if there's any issues like open files, it will continue to try to back those up. If they are in use, it'll just try again at a later point. But yeah, this is it running at the moment. We can also got restore options as well. So you can go on to, you can log on to the website for Backbase, which is where you would have got the trial from, and you can restore the files straight down from that. Um, you can also request drives, but I believe there is a cost to that. And I just wanted to mention that Backblaze is a limited backup service that charge you on a subscription model. And now we move on to Acronis True Image Backup Software. Now guys, this is a similar model to Backblaze. There is an option to upload it into the cloud, um, but you can also do local backups. And we've got the trial here today to run through the setup of this software. Now guys, you can, you can use this software just to back up to your local disks or local backup to drives, similar to Windows Backup, or you can choose to buy the more advanced subscription model, which would then allow you to use the Acronis cloud services. Now, there is another um, feature that Backblaze and Windows doesn't do, which is this has got an integrated anti-malware defense system. Now, that's obviously a tick in the box, especially around these sort of times when we don't want to have anything infected or anything, but it's a useful feature to have and it's slightly cheaper than Backblaze but at the same time Acronis Cloud doesn't offer a unlimited service like Backblaze does. So we're just going to go through this setup here so as you can see I've installed the application and then we're just going to start this and guys there is a trial available on the Acronis website I'll add all the links in the description for this video. So we've got the application installed and then we're going to fire up the application and then it's going to ask us to accept the license agreement so just pop the ticket in the box and click OK. And then in the bottom left hand corner we can see there's a start trial button. Again fill in the details and then you can start your trial. Now again it goes through a nice sort of guide of how to's and things to how to use the software which is very nice. You can just click through those and it gives you what it can do and the abilities of the Acronis True Image software. Now we're just going to quickly go through these. Just tells you it's got about the true image ability and just the clone disks. Um, slightly different approaches to things like Backblaze and the Windows. And again, Windows has its own built-in uh, image ability. But again, you can see my laptop there on the left, and then we can set the destination. Now, obviously, if you've got your own disk, you don't want to push it into the, push your data into the cloud. You can do that. Um, if not, you can start your Acronis Cloud trial. Um, and this will enable you to upload data straight away. Um, and I believe it says that we've got a terabyte of data to storage to use. So we can do that. Um, we can kickstart that off. And then we're just going to go back. So there you go, you can see it's activated the trial now. We've got a terabyte of data to use. Um, you've also got the ability to. Uh, archive, sync, you've got tools, you've got active protection, you've got your account and you've got your settings. So just have a quick look at each of these options in the software. So you see that by, de by default the active protection is on which is good, we don't have to worry about checking that. You can see some of the settings here about Enabling the backup across Wi-Fi. If you're using a Wi-Fi connection as well, so you might be out and about, you don't want your Acronis software to start backing up when you're on a Wi-Fi connection. So there you have it, guys. Just a simple overview of Acronis, and I've also included a comparison chart which you can see here, just going through some of the features of Acronis versus Backblaze, Carbonite, and iDrive Personal. And guys, now we're going to move on to our final segment, which is going to be about Apple's Time Machine backup. Now, guys, this is very similar to Windows. 
but it just has a few other sort of nice features and obviously a very interactive GUI. Um, so we're just going to plug in the drive here and then I've got the option for a time machine in my toolbar at the top. But if you do not have that, you'll need to go to system preferences to get that. And I believe I'm just going to show that now, just so if you don't have the icon there, there's two ways, multiple ways to get there. So if you go in system preferences and there's a little tick box down there. So I plugged in my drive called Untitled. I'm just going to select that from the list. I'm going to tell it to encrypt the disk just so my backups are safe. So I'm just going to pop in a password here. And then once that's done, the software will go and format my disk ready for Time Machine to use the disk and also encrypt the data that's on that disk. Now, guys, if you're using things like File Vault, you will want to encrypt your disk. Um, so, yeah, once that's done, it's then going to start backing up automatically. And now that's done, it will take a backup straight away. Um, it also gives you the ability to exclude certain backups if you don't want to back up certain files or you've got large files you might be working on that you don't necessarily want to be taking up storage on your backup drive. So as you can see it's starting already, as soon as I close that it's going to start calculating how much data needs to be backed up and then it's going to start that backup. And guys this software is fantastic, it backs up as soon as you plug in the drive and it will also prompt you if you haven't backed up within a certain number of hours or days. So it's always useful to just make sure you plug in the backup drive every so often just so your machine is able to take another snapshot of your disk. And guys, by the way, it is taking a full snapshot and fully restorable snapshot of your machine that can be used at any point to either restore individual files, you can restore your whole OS, and you can even restore onto a new machine if you wanted to recover some files or you wanted to migrate your existing OS over to your new computer. And again, if you need to, you can if you only want to see the kind of GUI you get, this is the nice interactive GUI I was talking about where you can restore files that may or may not have been on your desktop. And that concludes our video on the Apple Mac Time Machine software. Now guys, I've, I've gone through a very high level view of these pieces of software, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to get in touch and I'll happily help you guys out and assist you where I can. And guys, stay safe everybody and thank you very much.